Hello everybody, Rick Powell here with the Powell Fine Homes Group and Real Broker LLC. Today's episode, we're going to talk about the Boise bubble. 72% overpriced or not? Is it fact or is it fiction? Stay tuned to find out. Okay, everybody saw the news articles and the TV shows talking about Boise was the bubbliest, most overpriced market in the country. This was last year, 2022. And today we want to dive into the fact or fiction in that. Now, a little background on me, if you don't know me personally, I've been a real estate broker, made my entire income from real estate for almost 20 years now. I'm a third generation broker. My parent, mother was a broker and both her parents were brokers as well. So between working in the business full time, being a real estate investor for over 30 years, and then also growing up in the business, I have you know, 40 years plus experience looking at the market, paying attention to what's going on, what drives it, what doesn't drive it. So when I saw the 72% overpriced number, really made me stop and think. I said, okay, let's go look at this because it doesn't seem possible that a market can be 72% overpriced and yet people were still moving in there and there were still multiple options, you know, offer scenarios everywhere. So what I want to do now is I want to dive into some data. Don't just take my word for it. I want to show you how I came to my conclusion that it's more fiction than fact, and some of the things that changed they really didn't look at. So let's start off. I'm going to jump over here and share my screen now. Here's This is the Daily Mail. Now, the Daily Mail is certainly not the best financial source I would ever use, but you know it, it's representative of all, of all the articles I saw. How about that? And more importantly, it cites the study that I want to dive into, and then we'll talk about how accurate it was and whether or not they were actually looking at all the metrics they should have to make a decision or a call like it was 72% overpriced. So let's jump in here real quick. So is America on the verge of a house price collapse? Prices could crash up to 20%. My goodness. And, you know, homes are overvalued by as much as 72%. Who knew? So let's dive in. Who are they talking about? There it is right there. Boise at 72%. So if we're going to talk about that, Let's jump into what was their data about. So here is the actual Florida Atlantic University study that was released. This is what everything was based on, who's overvalued and all that stuff. And right now, it's uh, set up for today, which shows that we are only 50% overpriced. No problem. So let's dive into this. So they started out and they, you know, January of 96 is when this, or February, end of February 96, the expected price. And also one other thing you got to look at, the light blue line, which is the one that is dictating whether we're 72% or 50% or whatever the number may be, that's the ZHVI price, which is the Zillow Home Value Index. That's the same Zillow that lost almost a billion dollars buying houses, overpaying for them, and proving that their models aren't actually all that accurate. So take that with a five-pound bag of salt because that's what's driving the data. But let's go back and look. So here, the models actually worked from 97, March of 97, you go all the way up to the end of February of 2005. Then it started breaking because we got into the bubble before the recession, the Great Recession, if you will. So, okay, they weren't working where it broke in 2005. The next time it was accurate was the end of 2008 when everything came apart. As it dove through the model line, it was accurate for just a couple days. And then it wasn't accurate again until the end of September 2018, and then it wasn't accurate again to that. So going back 17 years, they were accurate three times. Three times. Now, if your doctor was only accurate three times in the last 17 years, would you keep going back? Or your dentist, would you go back to him? Or your CPA, God forbid, or your boss, or whoever you think about it. So over a period of 17 years, it's accurate only three times to be dead on accurate. How much weight should you put in it, all right? Because part of what they're talking about is what Zillow expects. Part of what their modeling was, was that, you know, the median income in Boise is only so much. So based on the median income and what we think prices should be and what prices are actually turning out to be, it's 72% overpriced. So let's dive into that a little bit. Because when I was one of the things that I'm looking at is being here on the ground, the people who are coming in, quite a few of the people, especially 2021 20, and 22, were not making the same money as the median Boise income. They were making far more. So if we dive into that, I'm going to jump back into the screen again. So we're looking at how it's still overpriced. And the next tab I want to take you to 
is from United Van Lines, and they do a mover survey every year. They go ahead and they, of all the people that moved, they say, hey, where did you go? Why did you go? Well, they know where they went because they took care of them, but why did you move there? What's your income? What's your age? Now, certainly not 100% of the people who they moved answered everything, so it probably trends a little bit to the older demographic. However, it's the best data that I can find in, in real time. We're in between census years right now, so it really hasn't given us any data that we can pull from there. So let's look at this. So I'm going to look at the year of 20. Let's go actually jump to 2021. So we're going to select Idaho for 2021. So why did people come here? All right. 29% came for retirement, 5.7% for health, 34% moved for family, 27.8% for lifestyle, Seven only 17% actually moved for a job here. And I'm assuming that that's a geographic job where you're actually showing up at bricks and mortar to be there. And then 12.6% came for the cost. You look at the age ranges and, you know, 67% are 55 and older. And then here's the most important part that I look at, and it's income, because quite honestly, income dictates what you can buy, how much house you can buy. So median income in uh, Boise for 2019 was around 60,000. In 2020, it was 63,000, 64,000. In 2021, it jumped to 68,000, all right? And I'll finish the 2022 in a minute. Of the people moving here, you've got what, 32%, so 62% right there made over $100,000, all right? So 62% of the people made over $100,000, which is roughly what, 40% over the 60,000 of income of median income of 2019. So we have people coming in making more money, they can afford more homes. So that in and of itself, and the fact that so many homes sold and there were, you know, almost everything was a multiple offer situation. So it shows that regardless of what the models think, the market was showing a different story. Low interest rates, tight inventory, both of those always drive it. So let's jump into the 2022 income. It was 87500 That's a significant jump. Now, the reason I wanted to call that out last is if we jump to this uh, it's an article in the Boise Dev. I think it came out of Redfin originally. But they talk about, of all the bubble cities, Zoom cities, whatever you want to call them, Boise actually had the biggest income growth because the people moving in had more money, which drove the pricing of the market. So the median jumped 53% from December of 2019 to December of 2021. That's significant. I mean, there's a downside to this too, honestly. and It's a serious downside, and that's Native Idahoans, native Boiseans who, you know, grew up here, they've been here for generations, their kids are really going to struggle to be able to afford a house because we've had so many people move in that are making six-figure incomes that has driven the prices up. Now, prices have settled from the peak. We're down overall about 11%. If you look at the 2021 year in, or 20, sorry, 2022 year in numbers, we're actually still up some, but if you look at where the, we were in a peak, which was probably April or May of 2022 to where we are right now, we're down about 8%, 9%, but nothing like the 20 or 30 or 40% that there's a group, I call them the Crash Brothers, you know, Crash Bros. Uh, they're always like, oh, it's, you know, it's going to be like 2008 again. It's not. And that's a whole different video. I'll do a deep dive on that. But credit profiles are far better than they have been. Underwriting is far better than it has been. It's nothing like... 2008. And one of the safety nets we have, and we're sitting here talking about bubble versus reality, is that when you have low inventory, which we certainly do right now, I think there's, as of this morning, there's 445 active homes in uh, the Boise metro area right now. You know, if you go back to the, the Great Recession, you know, it was north of a thousand. And if you look at the months of inventory, we're at three and three and a half months of inventory versus, you know, you know, some markets were in 16, 18 months back in 2010 and 11. So we don't have the same criteria. We're not in the same metrics. And quite honestly, models are broken. We're, we're in uncharted territory. I mean, if you want to drive a close analogy, I believe the closest analogy we have is probably going to be 19, probably 1981 to 83, or maybe 80 to 83, because you had the shock of high gas prices, although those, those have certainly retreated right now. You had very high interest rates. As a matter of fact, I've got a, uh, over on my desk, I have a interest a mortgage interest rate calculator. It starts at, it's from 1981. It starts at 10% and goes all the way to 21%. Seriously, not joking. I mean, granted, 
Yes, houses cost a lot less back then, but people made a lot less back then too. I mean, if, if you, I think I did this a couple of weeks ago. I did a, I tried to calculate, okay, $1981 versus $2022 house prices, income, everything. It, it is harder to buy a house today than it was in 81. So I'm not going to say, well, my parents paid you know 18% for a house. It's not a straight line apples to apples comparison. It's really not. But it still was very difficult from 1981 to 83 because of the high interest rates and what people made. But you know what? The housing market didn't crash. It actually grew. If you look at that three-year period from beginning to end, homes actually wound up being more valuable at the end of it. So something else to think about. Even Jerome Powell, the chairman of the Federal Reserve, has said the models don't work. And we don't even look at models anymore because they don't work. They don't. They can't consider everything. You just saw from the models I just walked you through, that model was wildly off. And while we're in uncharted territory, at the same time, there are some pages we can take from the past to look at. You know, inventory is always critical. No matter what anybody says, you can't buy what's not for sale, number one. Number two, prices can't go into free fall without a ton of inventory. Again, supply and demand, it, it's no different in real estate than it is in anything else. If there's too much of a product on the market, prices come down considerably, and then, you know, you see the crash. We don't have that right now. You think about all the people that we have in homes right now, all the demand that got pulled forward. When I say that, you know, speaking as a, a real estate professional now, there were plenty of people we put into houses over the last two or two and a half years, three years, that hadn't originally to plan to buy. But when they looked at how low interest rates were, how much they could buy for their dollar, they jumped in and they got great houses. Was it difficult? Yeah. Was it heartbreaking in some cases when they didn't get the house because they didn't have all cash or half cash or whatever? Yeah, it was certainly, there's a lot of sob stories out there too that are truly heartbreaking. I don't mean sob stories in a flippant way. It's truly sad. However, we probably pulled between five and eight years worth of future demand forward between 2021 and 22. So, those buyers are done. They're in houses. They have interest rates that are below 4%, many of them below 3%. And if you look at overall sales in general, buyers coming into market real estate, roughly 60 to 65% of the buyers are move up buyers, meaning they sold their house, they're buying a new house. If you're in a 3% or say, let's use it for round number, sub 4% mortgage, you're going to have to sell your house and you're going to wind up between 6.3, 6, 6.8, somewhere in there. Are you going to do it? Probably not. Most of the ones we talk to are not. So those people are sitting on the sidelines. That inventory is not coming in. So you don't have the competition of listings dropping their price left and right in order to get sold. So that's a safety net. I mean, quite honestly, I think all, all, all in all, we're 8% down right for the median price. I mean, the real numbers were probably down 11%. But on the actual median sales price. We peaked, oh, let me see, I wrote it down here. We peaked in March, no, May. May, 602250 was the, the median sales price. That was as high as it got. And right now for December, it was at 566. You know, roughly 8% that we're down when everybody said we would be down 20, 30, 40% by this time. And we're not. And, and there's no free falling, quite honestly. If you look at the amount of new listings coming on the market, they've been dropping every month for the last few months. And without new listings coming on, the only reason inventory is growing is it's a function of days on market. Houses are staying on the market longer. So again, that's a whole different conversation. I'm not going to get into that this time. So, you know, to wrap this up, Boise was not 72% overpriced. It was according to the model, but the model had so many flaws in it that it should never have been held up as holy writ or however you want to hold something forward as the gold standard of what things should be judged against because they just didn't consider too many things. It drove the median income up. It drove the median price up. And if it was a true bubble, quote unquote, I hate when I do that, we would have crashed already. We would be down 20, 30 percent already. We're not. We're down, you know, high single digits at this point, maybe low, low double digits, but that's about it. Will it go down some more? Probably. Don't know. Some of the commodities are coming up. Some are coming down. Rents are certainly coming down. Home sales prices are coming down. But the Fed looks at lagging indicators. I mean, it, that, that's part of the problem we have. They don't work in real time. Like when you and I look at data or it's CPI or something like that, we try to drill down and say, okay, what's going on today? What's actually happening in real time? Like when I run my businesses, we have to work in a real time scenario because that's all that matters. I, I, don't, I can't really depend on 12 months ago or eight months ago or anything like that because especially in a 
changing market like we're in right now. That That's ancient history. It might as well be on a VHS tape somewhere for all the good it would do me right now. So they're looking at lagging data, so some of the decisions they have to make are not as real-time and accurate as I would like. Until we get below 5%, I don't know that it's going to be meaningful in the real estate market. The people who can buy are going to buy. People who are on the sidelines sitting, of which there are a great many right now, are kind of waiting for that 5 to break below that 6%. I mean, if we get down to mid-fives or, God willing, below 5% again, we're off to the races and it's a whole different story. But for right now, Boise, you know, it's it's stabilized. It's it's a there is erosion in price contraction, but it's at a stable rate if that makes sense. We're not waking up every morning going, oh my God, we lost another five percent, another ten percent. Nothing like that's going on. It's very stable right now. So Boise wasn't overpriced. I mean, was it overpriced? Yes, it was overpriced. Some was it seventy two percent overpriced? No, the model was flawed. So when you go and you read the real estate headlines. Don't just read the whole story. If they show the survey, if they say, okay, here's the study that's dictating this, go click on the study, go look at the data. I will do that as much as often, especially in the Boise market as we have more things coming out, just to see what their methodology is. How are they getting to that conclusion? Because I didn't see it then, I don't see it now. But fear sells, so everybody's going through the clickbait. There you have it. If you have questions on this or if there are other topics you want to see me dive into, Send me an email at sold at powellfinehomesgroup.com or leave a comment down below. Please make sure you like the video and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can see everything we put out and get notified every time a new video goes up. Thank you for watching. We'll be talking soon. Bye.